Hey guys, welcome to this week's Bite of Knowledge where every Monday I give a little bit of a shorter episode and it's called a Bite of Knowledge and it's just me sharing some insight to make you a little bit smarter and more prepared for this episode than your friends. So in today's episode, we are gonna be talking about foods you need in an emergency. And I'm going to go down to the nitty gritty, but also just cover some basics here. I feel like we all need just some ideas and also being prepared, at least for me, it just makes me feel more at peace, have a like peace of mind. And even if you don't have a lot of space in your home, maybe you live in an apartment or a flat, this can be still very beneficial for you because you know you don't need to have a backyard where you're planting your own fruits and vegetables. So definitely listen in. I'm also gonna be talking about the type of water and water filter that is probably best in these types of situations. So listen in, take notes, or save this episode so you can reference back to it later on. And you know this already, but you're listening to the Digest This Podcast, and I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. Let's get right into the episode. CBD has been clinically shown to encourage balanced gut health and immune function and can help ease discomfort associated with digestive problems. In fact, a study in the NIH notes that one promising effect of internal CBD use is, and I quote, the activation of cannabinoid receptors in the gut, which not only suppresses many of the IBD-related symptoms, such as diarrhea and visceral hypersensitivity, but also inhibits the inflammatory reaction. End quote. Additional studies share that CBD can inhibit inflammation, aid in patients with IBD, modulate intestinal barrier functions, help decrease intestinal secretions, as well as help with headaches. So you may or may not know this, but I have certainly tried and tested my fair share of CBD products dating all the way back to 2017, long before CBD was even talked about. And it was one of the natural remedies my holistic doctor encouraged me to take while I was going through my severe gut issues. And till this day, I still keep CBD in my bag of tricks for gut health and to help keep inflammation at bay. So how do you choose the right CBD for gut health? Because, well, in this dynamic world of CBD, knowing which product and type to choose can be a little overwhelming. However, the form and spectrum of CBD can significantly influence its benefits, especially when it comes to digestive health. CB Distillery is a company I have grown to love for their full transparency, USA grown hemp that is rigorously tested. And I just love that they display the most recent third party tests on their website for anyone to view. They are not ashamed to share their results with nothing to hide. I personally recommend trying their Ah Distilled full spectrum CBD tincture, which contains just two simple ingredients, coconut MCT oil as the carrier and their full spectrum extract. That is it. CB Distillery also offers a 60 day money back guarantee, which means you can use and try their CBD for a full two months. And if for whatever reason you're not satisfied, they will give you your money back. Guys, this is like a no brainer. And on top of that, they offer my listeners a whopping 25% off your entire order. Just use code digest at checkout to get 25% off and try it risk-free for 60 days. Go to thecbdstillery.com and use code digest. That's T H E. C-B-D-I-S-T-I-L-L-E-R-Y dot com and use code digest. I'll also include that link in today's show notes so you can simply just go there with one easy tap. And speaking from experience, when your gut is inflamed, there's pretty much nothing you won't try. I hope you guys love it just as much as I do. 
Okay, you guys, listen up. If you have the following symptoms, such as constipation or diarrhea, anxiety, sugar or alcohol cravings, poor immune system, compulsive or disordered eating, low muscle mass, poor wound healing, slow recovery after workouts, heartburn or acid reflux, or digestive issues like colitis, IBS, diverticulitis, Crohn's, celiac disease, or symptoms from food sensitivities, taking L-glutamine could be beneficial. L-glutamine is one of the most important nutrients for a healthy digestive tract because of its ability to maintain the integrity of the intestinal wall. This amino acid, which is the most abundant amino acid in our body, helps heal all human tissues, especially those irritated tissues in the digestive tract. It's also been known as the calming amino acid since it's very effective at reducing anxiety, as well as sugar and alcohol cravings. Even progressive addiction treatment centers will use it to help reduce cravings. Plus get this, you guys, in a 2011 study published in the Yonsei Medical Journal found that glutamine supports the immune system and it's especially beneficial for patients in the hospital and those fighting viruses or overwhelming infections. Your entire immune system is protected from the toxic environment by your gut barrier. And if that barrier gets damaged, you will get sick and create an overactive immune system, producing inflammation throughout the body. Thankfully, a damaged gut lining can be reversed and can be accomplished by getting enough gut healing nutrients such as L-glutamine. Clinically, medical professionals have found this to be true with their clients and I myself have experienced the benefits. That's why I created my very own L-glutamine powder under Bethany's Pantry. This powder is pure without any additives, fillers, flavorings, gums, or unnecessary ingredients. The ingredients are literally just one, L-glutamine. It's vegan, paleo, keto, and tasteless. So you can literally just add it to a glass of water, stir for five seconds, and sip without tasting anything. This amino acid also works well in smoothies, mixed in yogurt. I've even added it to my guacamole. It dissolves instantly and you can't even tell it's there. And your body will thank you from all the benefits you're giving it to fully heal in the area you need healing or just boosting your immune system in prep for the upcoming flu season. Guys, I am so proud to finally offer a clean L-glutamine powder I can fully recommend. If you want a bag, just go to newsest-usa.com slash Bethany's Pantry, where you'll find this plus all my other Bethany's Pantry items. Again, go to newsest-usa.com slash Bethany's Pantry. That's N-U-Z-E-S-T-USA.com slash Bethany's Pantry. I'll also leave that link in today's show notes. Okay, you guys. So a lot of people may not know, but shelf-stable foods can be just as healthy as fresh ones if you know what to choose and how to look for them. So, I mean, a dinner emergency used to be when you ran out of carrots and onions halfway through making chicken soup, right? But over the last few years, most of us have had a glimpse of situations that are a little bit more dire, like power outages, natural disasters, damaging weather events, and let's not forget the elephant in the room, which is the 2020 pandemic that has forced us to reevaluate our usual strategies in the kitchen. And if there's a lesson to be learned from all of it, it's this. It pays to plan ahead. Stocking your pantry with healthy and shelf-stable foods means you'll always have a solid meal strategy in place. And that can even help with regular run-of-the-mill weekday emergencies too. In fact, it's best to stock up on items that you actually do use regularly so that you can rotate them out uh, so you never have expired food in the case of a time of true need. So I've got a list of emergency food recommendations to keep stashed in your pantry. So are you ready? Okay, so number one is low sodium canned beans and other legumes. So you don't just have to stick to beans here. Uh, The entire category of legumes, which includes lentils and dried peas, this is a top plant-based source of fiber and protein. Now, from traditional red beans to rice, 
homemade hummus. Like we've got tons of legume recipes on, uh, you can look at my Instagram. So if you're wondering what to do with them, definitely check that out. But whether it's canned or dried, these are definitely some staples you should have on hand. And a lot of people know this, but when you add beans to foods like rice, you're actually creating what is known as a complete protein and complete proteins have all the essential amino acid your body needs. The one downside about canned foods in general though, they they tend to contain a lot of sodium. So to get around that, you can opt for no or low sodium brands like Trader Joe's. They have low sodium. I've seen them at pretty much everywhere, Sprouts, Whole Foods, they offer those options and alternatives. If for some reason you can't find low sodium, uh, you can always give it a quick rinse before using, which you should always do anyways with canned food. Obviously canned tomato sauce is a different story, but dry canned beans, you should always just rinse anyways. And this should help reduce the amount of sodium by more than about 40%. And Though I talk a lot about sodium, I do want to note, I talk a lot about it and how we actually need it in our diet. The salt that is typically added to canned products is not the type of salt that we want to load up on. So just be mindful of that. There is a difference. And again, like not a huge deal if you are can't find low sodium. And honestly, I would rather have the salt even the the quote bad salt, I would rather have that than as my form of preservative than any of the other nasty chemicals they often use in canned foods. So I mean, I feel like that's definitely the lesser evil of the two is the salt. Um, just be sure to stay clear from those other chemicals, especially if you are eating these canned foods on a regular basis as you rotate them out. Here are some preservatives you may find on the ingredient list of your canned items. So I'm going to share some right now. I personally stay away from them all and just look for canned goods that contain just water, salt, and then the type of food you're actually buying. So that's it. That's what I look for. So uh, here are some preservatives you should be aware of. So sodium benzoate, calcium sorbate, sulfites of any kind, We've got nitrite, again, nitrites of any kind, sodium nitrite, again, ascorbic acid, BHA, you'll see that even on, not not even in canned foods, but like dried foods. There's other types of acids as well you want to be aware of, like citric acid is another one. For those that don't know, citric acid, 99% of the time, it is actually, it's man-made from black mold in a lab. So I definitely try and stay away from this, especially because for me, at least my history, I am very susceptible to mold, yeast overgrowth. And for those that have been following my journey for a long time, you know, I actually suffered with fungamia, which is like yeast throughout your entire body and like fungus. It was just disgusting. Anyways, that was a long time ago. But all that to say is I am very cautious when it comes to this ingredient as well. If you are buying a few items with citric acid to supply your emergency items, it's not the end of the world though. So you just want to be mindful if you are going to be rotating this to avoid spoilage, reduce waste, and ultimately not have five-year-old expired canned goods, then just keep in mind what you're going to be okay with consuming on a regular basis as you rotate them out. When choosing items, always think, hmm, do we often eat this now? And if you don't, it's probably best to look for something you do eat on a regular basis. A great example is that my husband and I, we don't eat pork. So why would we buy dried bacon, a meat stick, or anything that contained pork? It just, we wouldn't be eating it anyways. So if you like, if you don't eat peanut butter, why stock up on peanut butter? So instead, you can opt for other butters like almond, cashew, or even sun butter, which is nut-free if you have a nut allergy. I personally stick to the organic sun butter because it's just one single ingredient, which is organic sunflower seeds. That's it. No salt, sugar, or any added preservatives or oils. Sun butter is also shelf-stable after opening, 
which is a like 10 time plus benefit. Other nut butters, like almond, cashews, you have to refrigerate them after they are opened and typically should be discarded. So you can you should consume them within a few weeks. So if they are opened, then that's when like the ticker starts ticking, I guess you you could say, and you should consume them um, more like fast. And the reason this is, is because the oxidation in nuts in particular, and the type of fat in nuts, it oxidizes so much faster than sunflower seeds. So just be aware of that, that the oxidation begins. All right. So next up, we've got just dried grains. So Grains can be an incredibly nutritious part of any meal, whether you're in a state of emergency or not. One study in the NIH found that the more servings of whole grains in your diet, the lower risk of developing coronary heart diseases, diabetes, obesity, and certain gastrointestinal disorders. And there are plenty of whole grain options available to keep things interesting and even gluten-free. It's all in the way you prepare them to keep them low in oxalates, lectins, and easier to digest. In general, people tend to use whole grains in savory dishes, but they're equally delicious and beneficial in sweet dishes too. For example, old-fashioned rolled oats, as long as they're organic, that way you're avoiding any kind of glyphosate, um, like steel-cut oats, even quinoa, they all make really delicious uh, porridge. And if you serve it over some milk, a little bit of honey, it is just like almost like a pudding in a way. Um, Definitely soak them for easier digestion, which creates the germination and sprouting. And it's always best to buy them in their whole form rather than ground. So like, for example, don't buy oat flour, like pre-ground oat flour, buy the whole oats. And then if you do want to make a flour, then you make it yourself. This helps extend the life of any grain and it reduces, again, the, the oxidation process. Now, the grains that tend to last the longest include barley, rice, spelt, oats, and quinoa. Also, fun fact, quinoa is even a complete protein and contains all nine essential amino acids, even when eaten alone. And this is very rare for a grain, but quinoa made the cut. If you've ever wondered about the non-toxic air fryers, shampoos and conditioners, organic undies, and new food products on the market, and even some not available to the public yet, and well, you want to get the inside scoop, then you need to join the 20,000 plus people that are already receiving these updates via my Friday Finds newsletter. I share information that only my subscribers get in their inbox, stuff like non-toxic kitchen appliances, new food finds, product recalls, food news, and even personal care products we all should or should not be using. My Friday Finds newsletter goes out once a week every Friday and has quickly become some of my followers' favorite things to open in their inbox. I've even started to include a recipe in this once a week newsletter. This is not published anywhere else and cannot be found on my blog. So if you're not part of the over 20,000 people that are in the know, be sure you're not left out by going to littlesipper.com slash subscribe and enter your email. That's it. It's free. There's no spam. Just helpful, insightful content full of goods, literally. So pause this episode and go to L-I-L-S-I-P-P-E-R dot com slash subscribe. That's L-I-L-S-I-P-P-E-R dot com slash subscribe. Next pantry item to keep on hand are unsalted nuts and seeds. So nuts and seeds are a great calorie dense staple. They're rich in fiber and healthy fats. They are also incredibly versatile. You can enjoy a handful just as a snack, sprinkle some on top of a smoothie, yogurt and salad, or even use them in place of breadcrumbs on meat. 
poultry, and fish before you bake it. So research actually found that eating nuts regularly is associated with lower cholesterol and lower risk of gallstones, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. In fact, in an additional study, they found that eating nuts daily was linked to a longer, healthier life overall. And nuts and seeds are perfect in an emergency because while they can be added to any dish, they don't have to be cooked or need any power to prepare them. Just be sure you get whole nuts as uh, like already chopped, slivered, halved, etc. That means they have already started the oxidation process and will go rancid much quicker. I personally store my excess nut supply in our pantry refrigerator. I do have some jars out like on our kitchen counter just displayed just for snacking purposes, Um, but we often refill them. And if you don't plan to eat them within a week or more, I would definitely refrigerate the extras and excess you have on hand. Also, make sure the nuts are not coated in oils. Many mixed nuts, even if they're peanut free, even if it's a peanut free mix, they still contain peanut oil, which totally defeats the purpose of removing the peanuts. Like, I mean, you might as well have the peanuts incorporated at this point. If it's not peanut oil, then it's typically some other kind of seed or vegetable oil like canola that companies use to coat or roast the nuts in. So always check the ingredient list before buying. Don't just assume it's the nuts that you see in the bag or canister. All right, you guys knew this one was coming, but tinned low mercury fish, this is a staple. So we already know that like we've covered the canned goods regarding like the beans, right? But I feel canned meats often, they just earn a bad rap because they tend to be highly processed and packed with sodium. But this is mostly canned ham, spam, and corned beef. Fish, on the other hand, is a different story. So you can pack your pantry with cans or pouches of fish, such as salmon and tuna uh, that's packed in water. And if you're concerned about the mercury content, look for brands that use smaller tuna, like the brand Wild Planet. They actually, we get them at Costco, and they actually use smaller tuna tuna, which will have less mercury in general because they're smaller, they're younger, um, they have less accumulated in their body. The other brand that I would recommend is Safe Catch. That's a good choice. They actually test every batch for mercury. And I think I've seen both brands at Costco, but you can find them at other places as well. You can also buy canned wild Alaskan pink salmon at Costco and of course other places. I mean, I think Costco has a pretty reasonable price too. I mean, this is no ad for Costco. I keep mentioning them, but <laughs> um, they do. I we do get some wild salmon that's canned from, from Costco and the ingredients is just wild Alaskan pink salmon, water, and salt. That's it. Nothing else. We also love to keep tinned sardines on hand in our pantry. And we get ours from Trader Joe's. I, for whatever reason, I feel like they have the best price. I think it's like $1.99 per tin. And those are just packed in spring water. So nothing else, which I love. And I I feel like sardines are just so overlooked. Even in the health food space, like people just don't like them, but they are full of benefits and crazy nutritious. If you need some sardine serving suggestions, you can add them in a marinara sauce to amp up any pasta dish or use them as a topper on top of avocado toast. You guys have to try it. I'm telling you, avocado, sardines, toast, you have to try it. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a resonant media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.